Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back into some more bite-sized business advice. And today we got an episode lined up that you probably didn't think you would hear from this show or any business show for that matter. But we're going to be talking about an important topic. And that is one that I've personally been through. It's how do you know when it's time to walk away from your business? Very interesting, a little bit heavy of a topic. We'll do our best to make it fun. But at the end of the day, you got to know when. You got to know when it's time. Sometimes it's time to grow. Sometimes it's time to double down. Other times it's time to walk away and it's okay to lead down one of those paths. It's whatever's going to be right for you. So I have a very special guest who has a, I think, an interesting backstory. And we're going to learn from him what he learned about when it was time to walk away. So Jerry Scarlato, welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Brandon, appreciate it, brother. I didn't realize you kind of went down a, a similar path, but you know, it's as we were talking beforehand, I think this is a conversation that could be had more often because, you know, especially, I would say, especially men mostly, but entrepreneurs just tend to want to cover things up as best they can because they want to look like everything is okay and they want to look like everything's held together. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not fulfilled, happy, successful in your life and successful doesn't necessarily mean that the business has to be successful. I think that it's it's worth thinking about where you are in your life and what if a change needs to be made. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm excited to unpack this with you because for me, I mean, success is defined by the individual. I'm not going to I'm not going to sit up here and, and be one of those uh, toxic masculinity podcasts and be like, success is eight figures. Like, I don't care. However you define success. For me, it's it's level of impact. Jerry, I, I'd love for you to explain what what that is and was for you. But it, it is your path that makes you happy. My job and my goal with this podcast and guests like Jerry is to help you get there faster in a more harmonious way. And that's why we put out these episodes. So first and foremost, please subscribe because we'd love to help you get to your definition of success. Uh, but beyond that, Jerry, take me back to, you know, you had this, you were at this crossroad in your life where you obviously the topic of the show is how do you know when you want to walk or you need to walk away from your business? So paint the picture of what that looked like in your life at the time. Yeah. So last year, 2023, in June 2023, my wife at the time and I separated. And in my mind, I pretty much knew that it would be moving toward divorce. I'm the one that kind of started the separation and moved down the path. We were moving in a different direction anyway. We had been for the previous couple of years. So I, you know, that happened around June of last year. During the time between June and when I closed the business, I was full on growing the business. My mind was still in it. My, you know, my passion was still in it. I still, you know, was doing things. We actually planned a big 10 year anniversary that we did and we marketed it and we wanted to have all these things there and it was a great party, but we didn't really have a great turnout, which I'll get to in a second. But so during that time, that was a big thing that started my life or started changing in my life was my separation. Now you would think that that would have started the idea of closing the business and moving on and completely just like flipping the table over. But like I said, no, I, I knew that I wanted to keep going. I knew I wanted to keep growing and I knew I wanted to, I believed that I wanted to take the business to the next level. And then eventually some dominoes started to fall, I'll say. So, you know, we lost an employee, which is not, you know, businesses lose employees. It's a normal thing. Uh, the town is a small town, so it's kind of hard to find good coaches anyway. And I'm, I'm super picky. I would say most entrepreneurs are pretty picky about their employees to begin with. So being picky, that didn't help anything. I did end up replacing her pretty quickly, but then that employee, she, that coach wanted to leave pretty quickly too. So there were a couple of headaches. And then we had this 10-year anniversary, and it just didn't go well. 
We did all this marketing for it. We did all this planning. We had food trucks there. We had bounce house there. We had a, we did a promotion for uh, the local school. We were going to donate all this money to them if they came and did a, a dunk booth. So we did that too, but it just, we just didn't have a, a turnout, just didn't have a lot of people there. So that was strike two. And then my wife ended up actually getting a job literally in the same building, literally 10, the door was 10 feet to the left of our door. So that was kind of the beginning of strike three. So I ended up actually going on vacation a week after that anniversary party that flopped. And on vacation, I you know, every morning I'd go walk on the beach and I would just walk them down the beach and think about what all of this meant. Like, you know, I was kind of having these anti feelings and I'd say a lot of entrepreneurs get the feeling that they want to not feeling, you know, they get frustrated and it's like, Oh, I want to close the business, but it's just out of frustration, right? It's just a offhand comment or an offhanded thought. It comes and goes pretty quick, but this was gearing around. So as I was walking up and down the beach, and I asked the question, two questions. Number one, in the next 10 years, did I think the business would fulfill what success looked like to me in the next 10 years? That answer was no. So I'm like, okay, if I close the business, how would I feel about it? That was the second question. And as soon as I answered that question, or as soon as I said I would close the business in my head, I felt a, my body relax. I felt all this tension basically leave my body and I felt my brain level just kind of like literally come down and my mind just went clear for a second. And as soon as that clarity happened, I knew that that was, it was time to go. It was like the energy in my body was telling me it was time to move on because the combination of the two, number one, my body's going, yeah, just, it's just, it's just time to go. And the first question in the next 10 years, do I believe that I'm going to be able to fulfill what I believe is my purpose and what I believe success looks like. It just, it just made sense at that point. So that's, that's basically where I ended up starting the wheels of closing it down. So I mentioned this before, what, what was success for you at time at that time? When you asked that question in 10 years, what did you, how did you define success for yourself? Yeah. So you know, impact is, is the thing that I am uh, addicted to, if you will, helping people. Now, ironically, I, we were able to help the people that we had there very well. We did a great job of helping the people that were there. So we had, I'll say, depth of help, meaning we were help, we were able to help people at a deep level, even though it was just a fitness studio, people came there to exercise. You could ask, any of the members that we had, and they would tell you it's more than exercise. It's more than just a studio because we did things on purpose. We had nutrition counseling. We had, you know, I would sit down with them and if they had problems, you know, with different parts of their life, I'd sit down with them and talk through them. So it was more than just, you know, come in, exercise and then leave and, you know, we'll figure it out next time. So we had good depth of help, but we didn't have breadth of help. We weren't able to help a lot of people because like I said, the town had 12,000 people in it to begin with. And to be honest, at our highest, we had 125 members, which is 1% of the population of the town. And if you ask any other business owner, if they'd like 1% of the population of their town to be customers, I'd say, they'd say yes, but 1% wasn't, it just didn't feel like a good reach. I felt like we could do more and I felt like we could do better, but I didn't feel like that we were going to able be able to start branching out, meaning going and getting different locations, being where we were and being how it was. So that's what success was, was being able to reach both width and depth with people. And while we were able to get the depth of help with people, there wasn't a whole lot of width. There, there wasn't a whole lot of reach. Yeah, you know, that's it's interesting because we when we're working with our clients, one of the first things we do is we set a five year vision. Most companies don't have one. Uh, most small businesses especially don't have one. And those that do, they're not really effective. They're just like pretty words on a wall. Um, and that's not the system we use. We, have, we integrate it into how we operate our businesses on a day to day basis. Why am I saying all this? It's very important because you said before we started recording um, the vision you had for your business was too big. It seemed like, 
Um, and you just said, again, you, you didn't feel like you could achieve success in 10 years. 10 years is a little bit further out than we would typically work. But even for you and for the companies we work with, we are very clear. Your vision needs to be big and inspiring, but not too big, because that will actually demotivate you. And it sounds like that was kind of where you were at this 10 year anniversary party when it, when it, it flopped, it didn't go as planned. And then you look at that vision and you're like, with this, how do we get there? Right. So, um, I mean, is that, is that what was going on for you? And did you now looking back, do you see a different approach to that? Or is it just, is that really just what it was? Uh, I think that that was the biggest part of it. Yes. Because, it's like I said, the, the, the demographic just wasn't sustainable for what, you know, I've, I've always been a big fan of doing vision work and like writing out long vision. And we did that pretty regularly actually throughout the 10 years that the business was opened and we accomplished a good amount as far as like projects and things like that go and, uh, services that we delivered but we never got to the width like i said we never got to the we all we it's a location in this area and a location in that area and so on and so forth and a certain amount of members and we weren't able to get to that so that's the the bigger vision certainly was the thing that i would say was the foundation of why i started to close down the business i know online you know you got all kinds of reach so i know that the capability is just endless online. Whereas it was just so restricting where we were. And I, if I would have gone back to the beginning of starting the business, the biggest change that I would have made would have been the location of the business it would have been where it was geographically located because of exactly that there wasn't the numbers just didn't handle it. And, to be totally honest, the the environment didn't handle it either because it's a kind of a farm ish kind of town. So they, you know, for all they knew, they're like fitness place. What in the world we we do fitness every day, throwing hay around. So <laughs> at any rate, yeah, I would say that that played it. That was the major part of it. Yes, I was going to make the hay joke. I'm glad you did, and it didn't come from me because it's it would have looked worse coming from me. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious. So you said you closed the business around Thanksgiving and um, yeah, we're well past that at this point. But was there because I, I would have to think that this is the fear on some people's mind that they're attached to the business. It's a part of them, which I don't recommend first and foremost, but that's their identity. It's wrapped up in the business. Was there did you have to go through a, an identity separation and rebuild um, or, or what was like that mourning period for you, if any? Uh, most definitely. And I, I didn't expect it as much as I got it, which I think we all expect to deal with things better than we actually do. And that played very true for me. So the, I'd closed the business on Thanksgiving day. Literally we had a, a class Thanksgiving morning, which we did every year. And we did the same thing, eight 30 in the morning class. And it's, it's always packed. We had 20, maybe 25 people there. So at the end of class, I, you know, sat and gave everybody a little talk and so on and so forth. Everybody cried. And so <laughs> kind of getting a little emotional talking about it. But um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was a tough day. The first week or so was pretty relaxed. I felt pretty calm and I'm like, OK, I kind of feel good about this. And as I started to actually go through the process of closing the business, because I got to figure the equipment out and I got to do this and I got to do that. And, then, you know, there's things you actually have to do you know, that's things ramped up a little bit. It's just a level of anxiety kind of ramped up a little bit. And then it was probably six to eight weeks into it. I started to feel that detachment uh, feeling that you're talking about. I don't think that it was an attachment to, well, I mean, I'll say, I don't think it was an attachment to the business per se. It was an attachment to being a part of the organization and also being, which I didn't, I didn't really feel this coming. I'll say being the leader of an organization. Not that I ever looked at myself as like, oh, I'm the boss. You got to listen to what I say. Because it was not like that at all. We were very democratic. Like we, I made sure that 
everyone was involved in making decisions. You know, if I had to make the ultimate decision, fine. But I made sure that everyone was involved when we were doing visions, everyone got their input. So it was not like that. But when it when it was gone, all of a sudden, I felt I knew that I enjoyed leading people, leading groups, especially like the in-person feeling is much different than online online it's you know i can talk to people at a camera all day long but it feels it just feels much different than it is in person if you have 20 people in a group and you're leading them and and you know they're doing things and they're feeling better and so on and so forth that energy is much different so that that was the biggest part of it for me was not being able to help like physically lead people and then like lead an organization uh itself and that that was tough to work through that. And definitely I, I started to slowly build things in to work, uh, work through those thoughts and feelings, but you know, that was, that was, that was hard. Hmm. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I asked that question because there's, there's two main ways out of a business, right? You, you close it or you sell it. Obviously there's other ways, but oversimplified. So we're talking about here, walking away and closing it. Um, and I wanted to ask you that question because for me, in my situation, I sold my business, but I came to a point where I hated it. Like I, I just even thinking about it made me physically angry because I was, I knew it wasn't going to get me to my vision. And I felt the same way. I felt like I had wasted time, um, that I couldn't get back. Now the, the lessons were valuable and I want to get to that part of your story too, but for me, it was easy. Like it was easy to walk away. And I, I don't think it had to do with the the money that I got from selling it. It was because of the hatred. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's a very, that's a very powerful word that I'm quite frankly using on purpose. Um, but for you, it seems like there was, it was obviously a different path. And that's where I think part of the, or it sounds like part of the identity piece is coming from. Um, and that's why I ask that question too, because it's, it's hard to run a successful business and then walk away from it. If, if that you believe that is part of your ultimate success. Oh, so yeah, a hundred percent. Sorry to jump in, but no, I, please. No, I completely agree with you. And that's, that's the irony of the whole thing is I loved what I was doing as far as the business. I was passionate about it. I loved helping people and so on. So, you know, for the average person, like m most of the people had a hard time understanding why I was closing the business. I think most of them believed that it was because of the divorce. So maybe that, you know, it made them feel a little better about it. But yeah. most of them, the that ones that came and asked me and talked to me about it, had a hard time understanding because unless you were an entrepreneur and you, you have a vision of what things look like and you know the purpose that you're after and you it's like why would you drop something that you enjoy to start over and go do something else people just you know a lot of people just have a hard time understanding that now to, to be sure <laughs> right now i'm happy not having employees i'm happy not dealing with like software issues i mean i still do to some degree but we had an app for the last couple of years that i just i just I just, I still get anxiety thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, there were other, there's other things, of course, I'm like, oh man, I, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that part of it. But the the business as a whole, yeah, man, it's like, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's literally dropping something that you care about to go hopefully build something that does the same thing, but just on a bigger scale. So what is that? What you you're in a good place now. You're feeling better. You're maybe wrestling with your your email, but not your app anymore. <laughs> I get it. We're always we're always going to have technology issues. I've just accepted that as part of life. Um, but what? How are you getting to your vision? I assume that ten year vision of success or definition of success is still relatively similar. So you've you've gotten to take a step back. I think it's a beautiful thing to have a pause, the ability to pause in life and think. So what are you, what are you rebuilding towards? Yeah, I would, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate that part of it, the pause part, and most importantly, how you do that, 
me being able to get out of the context of things and think through things was super helpful. Like I said, whenever we kind of had that party and things didn't go well, I got to go on vacation. I got to step out of the context, literally move, like be away from things. I went down to Florida and was out on the beach. And that was so helpful. That was so helpful to be able to clarify what I wanted to do if I wanted to close the business and start to think about what the future looked like. At that point, I wasn't like, of course, making big plans or anything like that, but at least I'm like, okay, I, I know I can start to go in this direction. But definitely having some period of time where you're like not immediately filling the gap with more stuff to do because you don't allow yourself to then plan for the future. Not that there has to be this big planning period, but at least be able to come up with some sort of succinct idea of what the future looks like. So I'll, I'll reiterate that that pause point and how important that is. But so right now I have a podcast as well called The Good Wolf Project. I've actually had that for 18 months, uh, a little over 18 months. So uh, that's a big part of that building and reaching people through uh, through the podcast and then through my content and branding and so on and so forth which again the rest of the world is also doing but the business part of it if you will currently is starting with my coaching program i have a program called the alpha life revolution where in 90 days i help business owners in a similar predicament as me you're feeling kind of unfulfilled you may have a level of success but you just have this anti feeling about you and you don't really know why that is helping them work through that anti feeling build themselves up a little bit get their you know areas of life kind of figured out in that 90 day period so that they can move and feel more fulfilled in their life so they don't have to have that uh, that anti feeling because i know exactly how it feels and it's just not a good feeling so that's where uh, the business part of it is starting and i look for it to grow and expand from there through, you know, like e-learning platforms and, and other coaching programs and things like that. That's awesome. I love that. I don't know about the, um, the podcast route. I think they're kind of dumb, but do people do that anymore? You know, Maybe it's, obviously. it's old. It's pretty old. I mean, you know, is anybody listening? Is this thing? Uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Mom and dad. Cool. You out there? <laughs> yeah. Hi mom. Hi dad. It's great to see you guys. Um, I love that direction. So I asked you before, I'm going to ask you again, 10 years to find success for me with this vehicle. I'm, this is not your identity, but with this vehicle, what does your success in 10 years look like? So I view being able to have a wide reach, being able to help a wide range of people through, like I said, the podcast and content and high level free information and things like that at a, and, and most of that stuff is on a very high level because you can't really get depth of uh, reach with somebody with free content like that. But to be able to have a wide reach, I would be super grateful to be able to have a wide reach. You know, I don't know what a good podcast download looks like, but tens, hundreds of thousands of downloads in a month's time or whatever that looks like would love. That's what the base level kind of looks like. And then on top of that, to be able to have depth of reach with a fraction of people. So wide reach and then a depth of reach with a fraction of people, a fraction of close people, what that looks like, maybe only 150 to 200 people that they those people can then go have a depth of reach with more people and so on and so forth so i look at it as kind of a ripple effect if i can have a really deep reach with 150 to 200 people and then those people can go and they can have a deep reach with 150 to 200 people and that ripple effect continues on down then it's infinite at that point mm -hmm. so that's why i think the breadth and the width are both important yeah that's a, that's a cool way to look at it i like that so if someone does want to listen to this podcast, tell me where to find more about you. Uh, so you can go to the website, goodwolfproject.us. You can find all the podcast episodes there. I also have two things. I have a, a daily email I put out called the daily 1%. It is compound, compound interest for your personal development. It's just a, you know, maybe 
three or four paragraph, short paragraph email with an action item at the beginning that you can put into practice today. And then of course you can find information about the Alpha Life Revolution there as well and uh, and apply for it. Super cool, Jerry. I love this. I don't I don't know about what you're hoping. I know what you said in, in terms of downloads, in terms of what's good for podcasts. I mean, this podcast gets somewhere between uh, one and two downloads a month. Mom and dad, hi again. Maybe hi, your parents will listen. We'll get four downloads this month. That'd be sick. Uh, kidding, of course, to our listeners. Thank you for being here. We love you. And you know, I can't let Jerry go without the last and most important question. This is the podcast where we know that powerful questions get powerful answers. This is a heavy topic. We, I think, did a pretty good job of, of lightening it up and sometimes. But for those people who are in that position where you were Thanksgiving morning, really a couple months before that even, and they're like, I don't know if this is it. And we have to revisit the question of how do you know when it was time to walk away from the business? What is a powerful question you want them to ask themselves until they find the answer that they may or may not want to have? The biggest thing that helped me was looking at the future. What if I keep doing what I'm doing for the next however many years? For me, it was 10 years only because I had been in business for 10 years at that point, but maybe it's just five. In the next five years, if I keep doing what I'm doing, am I going to be able to have the impact and reach and fulfill the purpose that I have on this earth in that period of time if I continue doing what I'm doing? If that answer is not a definite hell yes, you know where to look next. It's on the screen. Goodwolfproject.us. It's down in the show notes down below. Jerry, thank you for being here. Appreciate you so much, Brandon. For those of you watching and listening, this is the third time I've told you, please subscribe. We love having you here. I usually don't tell you that many times, but we want to make sure we continue to bring you episodes of this podcast that help you get out of that box you find yourself in, grow your business, and most importantly, build a more harmonious business and life. We'll see you on tomorrow's episode. Thanks for being here.